Welcome to this short lecture on type 2 diabetes mellitus. This lecture will essentially just quickly go through the disease, um, explain the pathophysiology and how the manifestations generally come about. So firstly, let's just go into how the system works normally. So with your gastrointestinal system or the GIT, you ingest food. Now in this case, we'll just talk about carbohydrates. So you inject, ingest food like um, starches or so forth, like breads or potatoes or pasta, and it's broken down in your GRT and absorbed into the blood. On the way to the liver, however, this break, breakdown product of carbohydrates, in this case glucose, will be picked up by the pancreas, and particularly the beta cells will release something known as insulin. Insulin. Now, with the combination of insulin and glucose, it will be taken to the liver through the portal system and the liver will start to store that glucose to try and bring down the level of glucose. Furthermore, the glucose and the insulin will be in the systemic system. So insulin will come out and it will go to the big tissues like fats and muscles in the body. And with the help of insulin, insulin, it will open up the door or carrier channels for glucose. And so what will essentially happen, the glucose will then flood into these cells and be created into ATP for energy and places like muscles can store the excessive glucose in glycogen and, muscle, and fat cells can store the excessive glucose as fat and the liver can store the excessive levels of glucose as glycogen. So all these tissues together with the help of insulin can bring the sugar levels or the glucose levels back to a normal range. Now, in the, the state of type 2 diabetes, however, there's generally two problems that come about. is either insulin, the cells in the body that we just spoke about become insensitive to insulin so they don't react to it, therefore the channels don't open, therefore glucose doesn't go in, that's one. Or the pancreas just doesn't release enough glucose, or enough insulin anymore. So therefore, the insulin's not in the mix. Or it could be a combination of both. Okay, so let's have a look at how it happens. Now, the risk factors that go with type 2 diabetes, so these are the risks that would predispose you to those cases of insensitivity, decreased release, or both. So the big ones are obesity, so the size on, in terms of fat, the amount of fat in the body, lack of uh, physical activity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and also um, genetics. So these are the ones that will predispose an individual to possible type 2 diabetes. Now, what would happen? Let's go for the insensitive case to begin with. So the glucose still comes in as normal and the pancreas still releases insulin. And as it goes to the liver and throughout the body, instead, the insulin doesn't bind to its receptors. Therefore, um, the muscles and the fat don't uptake glucose. So glucose tries to get in but can't. And therefore it stays within the blood. And um, because the cells in your body aren't getting glucose, they aren't making energy. So probably one of the first signs is fatigue. So because you're not making ATP, you're starting to feel tired and fatigued. And that's the lack of ATP produced by glucose. Now your liver will try to counteract this by because it thinks you're starving or running out of sh sugar, so it will release more sugar with the help of breaking down glycogen and so forth. But this is only going to make the, um, the matter worse. Now the pancreas will try to counteract this because the blood sugar is still high by releasing more insulin. And so you're releasing lots and lots more insulin. Um, the pancreas beta cells will sometimes become bigger and they make more of them, so hyperplasia and hypertrophic. But eventually the pancreas will also run out of fuel and it will lose its ability to release insulin. So it now becomes insulin insufficiency. So that will, it won't be able to release its insulin anymore. And so as a result now we've got well, in the initial case, when we have that increased amount of insulin, we might have a, a kind of an early section that we call hyperinsulinemia. 
but that's in the early stages until the pancreas gets exhausted and then we have an insufficiency. Now, once the problem with the insensitivity and the lack of insulin, then you can't take these up in the body. And ultimately what the next main problem is, is just too much sugar in the blood, which is what we call hyperglycemia, which is just huge amounts of sugar in the blood. Now, what eventually will happen is that blood will be taken to the kidneys and the kidneys just can't handle this amount of sugar and a lot of it will just pass through and go into the toilet. And so this is going to lead to another sign which we call glycosuria. Glycosuria is essentially just sugar in your urine. Now because sugar is a big molecule, it will be pulled we will pull water out with it. And so the person will de develop another symptom called polyuria, which is just excessive urination, high amounts of fluid in the urine. Now, because sugar is still everywhere, it's going to draw fluid, okay, from all the cells in the body, which is going to dehydrate them, okay, even in the brain. And that's going to make more fatigue and problems with thinking and so forth. And that's, that's caused from the hyperosmol drawing effect. Now, this, this hyperosmol effect will also make a person thirsty. And so that's called polydipsia and possibly also hungry. And that's going to be another sign, hunger. But the other, the other effect could be that a huge amount of sugar could affect the eyes and the person might also become or develop blurred vision. And so these are generally the most common presentations with the early stages of type 2 diabetes. And a lot of it's driven just by the high amounts of sugar in the blood. Now, we've seen that how it comes about. We've seen that the causes can be a combination of insensitivity because your insulin receptors is just not responding to it anymore. And that was driven by the risk factors of obesity, lack of exercise, hypertension, dyslipidemia and maybe um, genetics. And once the, you have that lack of, or you're more uh, insensitive to insulin, your pancreas will try to overcome it by releasing more insulin, which is the hyperinsulemia. But eventually that will become tired and run out of steam and it can't release the insulin anymore. Therefore we have that dual effect. And then we get, start to get the signs and symptoms with being tired and fatigued, glycosuria, polyuria, um, hyperglycemia, which will then bring on these so hopefully that has given you a quick overview of the disease, hyper, uh, the disease type 2 diabetes and how the clinical manifestations come about based on its disease.